Hi, Simon. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for taking the time today. Uh, just as a brief introduction for our listeners, uh, Simon Whistler is a writer, producer, and voice actor, and he also hosts a podcast called Rocking Self Publishing, which is one of my favorite podcasts about writing and indie publishing. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, so today we're going to talk a little bit about the creative writing process with Scrivener, uh, but let's start at the beginning with a little bit of background. How long have you been writing? I guess I started my first book about a year ago. In fact, I kind of strangely, I started the podcast before I actually started writing. I was, uh, as you mentioned, a voiceover artist and a narrator mm. before that. I started writing a year ago with my first book, uh, Audiobooks for Indies, which was the process um, about kind of getting a audiobook made as an indie author. The title's pretty self-explanatory. Um, working with Scrivener, which is, I, I know, one of the reasons we're on the phone today. Um, recently, just in fact, just two hours ago, sent out the advanced reader copies of my second book, um, which is Bootstrapping for Indies, a book about um, kind of self-publishing on a budget, especially for people who are looking to put out the first book. So that's a bit of my life there. Cool. Um, so did you discover Scrivener before you really started writing professionally? I think it was brought up, yeah, definitely before I started writing, but not before I started podcasting. It was brought up in a couple of interviews, and I think I saw, I think someone from Scrivener emailed me or I emailed them, and then I, you know, they said, can we give away some uh, copies to your, I think I said, can I give away some copies of Scrivener? Could you provide some? And uh, I'll give you mention in the show. I think it'd be a win-win. That's awesome. I got a copy of, I think I was on the trial, then I got hooked on it, and then bought the, uh, the, the piece of software, and then later bought it again when I switched to Mac. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm a good Scrivener customer. <laughs> so th that's really interesting. What was the experience like for you the first time you, you uh, pulled up Scrivener? Uh, it was pretty confusing. Um, I was a Google Drive, Google Docs, whatever they're calling it these days, person. Mm -hmm. um, I had like 20,000 words tapped out in there, which was simple to do, but became confusing. Mm -hmm. um, and basically just couldn't manage that, just kind of having to search through to find things. And I had been told, you know, Scrivener does the organization of things on the, you know, through those files and folders you get on the left hand side, I'm sure you know. What <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, just so basically I grabbed everything from the doc file, dropped it into Scrivener. <coughs> when I was running the trial, or no, it was probably I got the full software by then and then kind of just shuffled everything into place. And mm -hmm. group. Yeah, so um, you said that the biggest challenge that you had when you were using Google Docs was the structural organization of it? Yeah, everything just became a massive mess. Yeah. Kind of, I think also, not just the whole software, but um, I didn't plan my first book properly. I was kind of just... Sure. These are my Who does? There's a book. <laughs> uh, it isn't quite how it works. Next one was much more planned, and like, that was a big thing. But also, you know, when you've got twenty to thirty thousand words in one document, I mean, just to find, especially with nonfiction, where you need to go through and find something, you have an idea, like I need to add this to this bit. Mm -hmm. You're kind of like pressing Command F or Control F, and you're like searching it for uh, words that might be in there. Right. Like, what did I type in this part again? What did I title this bit? Mm -hmm. I want to scroll through. And so then you've got like 20 tabs open in the browser and you're like, I have no idea where anything is. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's tough. So you said it was a little bit confusing looking at Scrivener um, initially. How did you get over that? Did you read tutorials? Did you just kind of mess with it? I think they have that thing you can log in. <clears throat> See, I was on the Windows version originally. I'm not sure if, I, I assume they have this as well. Yeah, it's like a, a walkthrough tutorial template. Yeah, I got about like five minutes into that and then I was kind of like, you know, typical man. <clears throat> Let's throw away the instruction manual and just get started. I got this. Where's the hammer? Right. And from the looks of my IKEA furniture, it's probably not the best strategy. Sure. <clears throat> I have been known to assemble the cupboard inside out to get the outside. Um, so I'm not naturally gifted at this stuff. So uh, I, I kind of dive back into that. I basically went to YouTube, searched when I needed to know something, and, and Google to find relevant tutorials. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, <clears throat> so what is your writing process like now using Scrivener? Totally different. Okay. Um, worlds away from the let's get everything down. In fact, I do do the let's get everything down, and that does happen still in Google Docs, mm -hmm. where it's kind of like, let's just dump everything, just do a massive brain dump. Mm. And then it's like, then I make a structure, and then things from the brain dump kind of get sorted out and put into my structure. So the structure starts off with 
I, I open Scrivener because I'll never remember all the names of the different things. Um, yeah. So the, on the left hand side, you have Finder. Yep. Up, you know, right now. Um, and then you've got the folders. So I'll kind of come up with the different chapters I want. Those make up my folders. Then inside that, I'll kind of press the Control N and create those little. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me what those are called. The little. Yeah. Little, They're like text files. Text files. Thank you. Sure. And. Basically, then I give those titles of what I want to cover, kind of looking at the brain dump and kind of taking that and organizing it. Mm -hmm. Then I go through and I use the synopsis bit, probably improperly, to kind of put some notes on what I want to cover. And then if anything gets, if I want to, you know, if I have thoughts while doing that that aren't kind of just related to pure what I want to cover, mm -hmm. those go in the yellow box underneath the document notes. Right. And, and basically when the writing process actually happens, then I finally go into the big white main text edit bit in the center mm -hmm. and I go through and then I do a very fast, let's go through and expand <coughs> each of these points very quickly. Let's just get the words down and then those get crafted into the final book eventually. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're using a, um, a structural approach um, that some people call the snowflake method. Have you ever heard that before? I know. Uh, what's the name? Randy Ingemason's book. Yeah, I don't remember. Is the snowflake method? It, it might be. It's basically that you have like you know one large topic for the book, and then you break it down into you know smaller topics, and you break those down into smaller topics, and then you outline those sections. It's just like you know starting with one big thing and then breaking it down. I didn't know. I didn't know that what that's what the snowflake method was. Mm. Uh, no, that that's a good good analogy. Okay, and when you import stuff from Google Docs to Scrivener, it's just a manual process. Like you're like, okay, here's my brain dump. I'm just gonna redo it here. In fact, I don't even copy and paste. It's just the brain dump is something less. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and so much of it is just crap. And it's like, why am I writing this? What's going on? Yeah. And like, what was I thinking? Was I drunk? Maybe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, no copying and pasting. Mm -hmm. That becomes the structure. That becomes the message. Interesting. <clears throat> uh, and since you write nonfiction, you probably do a lot of research. Do you do research ahead of time um, in the brain dump phase, or is it kind of like as you're writing? Brain dump initially is no research, it's just kind of my completely unjustified gut feelings, and then I will kind of go through that brain dump again, and kind of add in a bunch of links, add in a few things I want to read later, and then those, you know, some of those links will make it as references into the final thing when mm -hmm. I use it, um, but you know, the first round is mostly just lots of things I want to cover. Mm -hmm of ideas I have um, and because I because I, I've done this podcast I mean I've done like 90 interviews or something I kind of have this just quite a lot of thoughts to tap into about different things mm -hmm. and then I'll go through and find out oh so maybe this person told me about this and I'll find their blog post about it and, uh, okay because immediately it, it comes to mind and I'm like I have no idea who said that but someone definitely said that right so it's like you've already done the research ahead of time because you're pretty good knowledge of what's going on yeah. A lot of the stuff, so, uh, but I obviously need to back it up. I can't just say, I think this, so you should do this. Right. I could, but it's just like, no one takes that seriously. <laughs> sure, sure. Cool. Um, okay, so tell me about the actual drafting. Do you use any specific um, functionality or features in Scrivener to help you um, be productive during that process? I have to say, I'm probably a pretty basic Scrivener user. Um, I know there are these extra features. Um, I like... The stuff goes in the trash, which I never remove. Uh, mm. that's, that's, it's nice to have, really like, a... <laughs> yeah, no, that's good, though. I mean, it, you know, a lot of the times, like, in Microsoft Word, um, there's no version history, there's no trash, so if you delete something, like, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, which sucks. <laughs> yeah. And I'm known to delete stuff and then just be like, no, I actually want the whole section back in. Yeah. Sure, sure. I guess Google Docs is nice for that too because they have that revision history, right? So like you can actually just delete it from the doc and then go back in time. Did not know they had that. No, oh, cool. it's, it's mind-blowing. So I, I've used Google Docs um, for some time. We use it at work um, and like if we're drafting blog posts or whatever, we'll do them collaboratively in Google Docs and it's great because if you go to the file menu and then revision history, you can actually see how it progressed and compare the versions. It's it's pretty cool. I think that's you know that's one thing that Scrivener doesn't do as well because Scrivener you have to manually go in and take snapshots, right? If you want to do that, Google Docs basically takes them automatically at each auto save. I generally I didn't know about snap. I'm learning things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, file save as and then I uh, 
done, give it its name, then I put my initials and a date to say, kind of, if my editor did it, then I would right. have to change it to their initials and, mm -hmm. dates and mm -hmm. just to track things. But obviously, there's a better way of doing that. <laughs> do you use the, the goal tracking or split screen mode? Oh, sorry, no, I do use, yeah, I do use the um, is it split screen mode where you have yeah. like two pages open at the same thing. Yep. Yep, totally use that. Okay. Um, wow, it, there's so many things that you don't think about, but yeah, right. I totally use that. And I use the statistics where it turns green, mm -hmm. um, you know, so you're like typing when it's like, I want to do like 2,000 words or whatever, Yep. and then gradually it, it's turning green. Yeah, I use that. Um, so what... I'm thinking about is definitely one of the other things I'm using. <laughs> sure, sure, I'll walk you through them. So um, what, is your, what is your daily goal count, or what's your normal goal count? Is it based on um, the deadline, or is it just based on your normal output? Deadlines, I, because I do a lot, you know, writing is um, just a part of what I do, so I don't have totally. a daily goal in terms of word count. I, I'm a big fan of hard deadlines, so today I had the hard deadline was to kind of finish the, I mean, I said the first time I go to the center white bit. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> the white bit. The text <laughs> editor. <laughs> and I go and I put the, you know, my taking the notes and making them into something that's going to turn into the book, which I'll then kind of polish and expand. So basically my hard deadline for today was have that done. Mm -hmm. And I had done about 50% of the book, which is probably going to be 20,000 words. So I had about seven or 8,000 words to do, knock them out in the morning. Nice. Um, they don't have to be good at this point. They just have to be something that can be crafted into something good. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so this was uh, a very brutal day of writing. But then the last three days I've done nothing. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Not nothing, just no writing. Yeah, I think that's good. You know, you have to give yourself deadlines to keep yourself accountable. Um, what about the, have you ever used the full screen mode? No, um, I quite like shrinking it down so it looks like a book. Mm, I see, um, yeah. So when it opens it, the, 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 the white bit, the text entry field is, is massive. Yeah. And I shrink that down so it's kind of like, I mean, it, it looks like black right. size. Right, so you open the binder and then you open the inspector on the other side and then it's... Nice and white, the inspector's nice and white. Yeah. Nice and wide, it, and yeah. Then I feel like I'm really entering, like I'm writing a book rather than a, a blog post. Right, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, do you, yeah, I, I'm the same way. I mean, I always like having the binder open because I kind of jump around and write out of order. Um, okay, so, I mean, that's an interesting concept. Christine Catherine Rush says that, she, you know, every writer writes out of order even if they won't admit it, right? Like, they'll start at the beginning and then the beginning will eventually become chapter two or chapter three. Do you find that you do that as well? Sorry, sorry I'm all over the place. <laughs> This doesn't belong in this section. Right. So I'll jump back to like, you know, 5,000 words earlier, you know, chapter whatever. And then I'll remain in that chapter, writing for the next hour. And be like, wait, wasn't I writing about something completely different when I started today? Mm -hmm. um, this is probably not great advice for writers. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's a particularly efficient way to write, but I'm all over it. Yeah. Well, I think Scrivener is good because it gives people the option to write out of order, you know, where something like Google Docs or Microsoft Word, you have one page and you have no choice but to write linearly. And I was telling you, like, the, the struggle of finding places to go in, in Drive. Yeah, yeah. You're searching for those keywords and you just, ah, oh, fine, I'll just write it here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then good luck, like, restructuring it later. Right. Oh, man, I, I can't even imagine doing that. Um, <clears throat> After using Scrivener, but uh, do you do you use the custom labels or status labels or color coding anything? Okay. <clears throat> um, so, what's your Scrivener process like when it comes to self editing? I'm just assuming here that you hire an editor um, and that you're going to do one draft and then probably read it yourself and self edit uh, at least once. Yeah, I'm a, I don't really know how I break down my. <clears throat> I don't think it's that linear for me. I'll definitely do the kind of very rough ideas draft, kind of taking those um, notes in the synopsis and document area, uh, document notes section mm -hmm. and writing that, then I would still say the next thing I do is still a draft, the next thing after that is still a draft, mm -hmm. and then maybe I start editing. Um, the first edit is just kind of getting it everything in the right order, I don't worry about typos, don't worry about grammar, I'm not particularly good at grammar, so I do rely on an editor to uh, help me with that stuff later, and then I use um, the text-to-speech function. Which um, I think is built into Scrivener. Mm -hmm. I, also use a, I use a program called Natural Reader as well, so I can play it back and edit it um, in Scrivener at the same time. Tell me more about this. So you use the text to speech, which comes with Scrivener. I think you know any of this accessibility stuff is part of most computers nowadays. You can just get your computer to read off the text. Yep. But what is Natural Reader? 
I think, I don't know if this is an issue with, uh, actually, I don't even know if this is an issue with Scrivener. I'm, my memory fails me. Uh, I was using Natural Reader, which is a, just a text-to-speech program that's separate from Scrivener. Because I, oh, I remember interesting. having issues that it wouldn't read back and edit. I wouldn't be able to edit at the same time. Is that is that a problem in Scrivener? Um, no, I, I can read. I can have it read back while I'm making changes, but okay. you know, like if you make changes ahead of where the voice is, it'll read the old thing. I think. Okay, I think then I was just relying. Then I, this wasn't an issue with Scrivener. This is maybe even pre that. Uh, so yeah. Now it, would, it would just be. I just, this doesn't. Seem to be it might be different on Windows though. So I'm using Mac, right? So like, if you were using the Windows version of the text to speech functionality, it might be different. Maybe maybe that. I, I'm honestly not. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, text to speech I love because it's just it points out oh that is a two rather than an of when I would just be completely uh, blind to it. So. Right, right, interesting. Um, so natural reader does it give you like a, a more natural voice? Yeah, but you have to pay for that, and I didn't pay for it, so I just have you know, Microsoft Sam. Or, uh, okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, no, I, I think this time I, I haven't explored it. This. I just, I don't know why I haven't explored it. It's obviously built into Scrivener. I've got to go mm. that. Yeah, well, I really love this idea of using text-to-speech to, to self-edit and to, um, like, to play the words back for you because you've read them so many times that you're just blind to the grammar mistakes and blind to maybe typos or, like, word choices. Um, and, and actually hearing them, it, it kind of, it tweaks a different part of your brain and it allows you to say, oh, Wow, that doesn't sound right, even though I've read that sentence six times. And yeah. do you find, like, as a voice actor, that this is part of your process? I find, as a voice actor, that I will still yeah, I miss things. Mm -hmm. You know, even when you're you're reading things aloud, you're you're reading like a sentence ahead. Mm -hmm. so you want to, you don't want to have to do too many edits. And if you're kind of reading every word and being super careful when you're reading. Mm -hmm. Just miss things, and, and your brain kind of fills in because it's like we have to get this right. I don't know why you know it's useful, but when you're proofing, it's completely harmful. So this this ability to read books and stuff as, as a voice actor is not helpful at all when proofing. Oh really? So you, you so, still you're still blind to your own mistakes even when you're reading I'm it out loud? To my mistakes, I'm blind <laughs> to other people's mistakes. I mean, I'll read a book and it'll be like I'll maybe spot one typo, <laughs> like a, someone else's book. Yeah, and they'll be like, oh, actually, we had like. <clears throat> <laughs> so you use the text to speech, you use natural reader. Do you ever actually sit down and read your book out loud and record it and then play it back to you? I haven't done mine yet. That's uh, I kind of said I'd do it in the first three months of this year, but I'm well aware it's already March. Um, <laughs> so that's probably not going to happen. Right. But it's uh, it's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. You mean in terms of sorry? Just in in terms of like uh, reading your book and turning it into an audio book. You mean? Mm -hmm. I'll probably spot like one or two of the 20 typos that they probably missed. Them. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, are there any other lessons from like podcast production or voice acting that have been able to help you in your writing process? In terms of the other than knowledge base, I think I've got from talking to so many people, I think just, you know, this the whole structure thing that I'm working on right now is. Um, thanks to Steve Scott's writing method. Um, he wrote a book called Publish a Non-Fiction, or Write a Non-Fiction Book in 21 Days, the reader's mm. novel, something, some super long title that I'm sure gets lots of hits on Amazon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this um, process of doing the brain dump, doing the structure, doing the notes, is um, largely largely his process, which has been amazing for the, the, the book I've just put out, the book I'm working on right now, compared to the first book, just fantastic. That is a fantastic book. Great. Yeah. And just, it, it works so well with scripting. Mm -hmm. like that whole process of just using the binding to structure, using the, the note cards, um, or whatever they call them, the synopsis cards, mm -hmm. to, uh, to put the ideas onto, it just, just makes it so easy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and do you use Scrivener for anything else, like for your blog or for researching or planning your podcasts? No, I have to say I'm more of an Evernote person. Um, oh, interesting. Just because it syncs with a phone so mm -hmm. I'll be out and about and I I, I just I'm, <clears throat> I love Scrivener for writing but note taking and I, I mean I draft emails in 
Evernote. And mm -hmm. Because then I can, I have the dual screens and then you want to have the email open on one and then you have the Evernote open on another. Mm -hmm. and it all syncs up with your phone and the iPad and all of this stuff. So it's just super easy. Yeah, totally. And I think that, you know, Scrivener is definitely falls short in that regard because you can't use it on the go. Right. I'd love it to have some sync cloud mobile functionality. That would be awesome. Yeah. From what I hear, they're working on an iPad app, but... Um, I am not privy to when that is going to be released. It just, it just seems like the next step. So yeah. It's, it's such a, I mean, I'm sure the development costs are massive. But right. It's like a, a smart move. Cool. Well, I know we're a little short on time today, so let's transition a little bit now and talk. Um, let's do a little bit of speculation. So um, <clears throat> just about the future in terms of technology. I mean, we were just talking about um, how Scrivener's obvious next move is to move to an iPad app. Where do you see the future of creative writing tools headed? I mean, based on your knowledge and how many interviews you've done with authors, are there any other things you foresee in the near future for, in terms of like creative writing tools, in terms of tools that would help authors be better at their jobs? I think over time, there's a general removal of the number of devices we have. I think maybe the tablet part that trends, but I, I don't wear a watch anymore. I don't have an MP3 player. Everything comes together in the phone. Mm -hmm. I still read my Kindle because I love that e-ink display, but increasingly I find myself when it runs out of battery <coughs> that I'll keep it for two weeks and just read off my phone every night. Uh, yeah. Um, so I, I, I like the separate devices, but I can definitely see it coming together to be one. And I can kind of see that happening on the other side of the equation as well. Right now I don't want to type on an iPad because the keyboard isn't up to it. But the technology, I don't know how, but it'll solve that issue and will reduce our devices and um, Scriven will put out an iPad app hopefully and right. probably a reduction in the number of things we have into one more multi-purpose device, whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. And maybe even if you have two different devices, just something that syncs across them that makes it seamless so that you yeah, could I like... When that doesn't happen right now though, I don't see that as a future thing. I'm, I'm like disappointed that's not in the present. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's true. It's 2015 after all. Come on. I'm like, why can't I open a Scrivener file in Dropbox? Right. Technology right. Incompatible. I know nothing about programming, but I'm like, why can't I also, you know, why can't Dropbox <clears throat> like, prove my, proof my little chapters when I'm sitting in the bathroom? Yeah, that's a really good point because Dropbox can read PDF files. It can read yeah. like dot .doc files for Microsoft Word. It can read Excel files, like everything. But Scrivener's unique file format is just totally incompatible with, with Dropbox's uh, viewing function. Yeah. That's a shame. As popular a software as Scrivener is, it's not as popular as PDF. <laughs> right. Yeah. That. <clears throat> compatibility that they, uh, they use. Yeah. Totally. All right. Cool. Well, um, we can end it here. I know you've got to go. Uh, just one last question. Uh, I know you said that you were working on that bootstrapping publishing book. Yep. Are there any other projects you want to share with us? Sure. Um, bootstrap publishing is coming out next. Well, this won't be relevant. But when this comes out, I guess it'll be out. Um, yeah. Um, and then the current one I'm working on is a title called. It, this is all in the for indie series, so I had audiobooks for indies, I had bootstrapping for indies, the next one's productivity for indies. Oh, nice. Um, basically, like I said, I've done a lot of interviews, had a lot of things. Um, I reached out to my audience and said, tell me what makes you most productive. I'm trying to, right now, it's in the, the working in the white area stage. So there's definitely going to be a Scrivener section of that book, right? There, there is a set, there's a software section, and within that software section, there is a dedicated you know how many people come in and shout out, I send the email out to my email list and was like, what are your productivity hacks? Scrivener gets an unfair number of mentions. Yeah. And yeah, and that's funny to me because there are no competitors for Scrivener that I can find right now. I mean, there was, there's one, I found this thing online called Noveler, N-O-V-E-L-R, uh, which is like an online novel writing tool, but... Even that compared to Scrivener, like that's the closest thing, but it, it's still like a far cry from what Scrivener offers right now. Yeah, I heard of it. Honestly, I wouldn't look for anything else. Right, yeah. If someone said, this is amazing, it'll blow your mind, you know, it's like the best thing ever, I'd be like, okay, I'll try it, but no one does. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, finally, where can people find you in your work online? Um, just go to my podcast homepage, comes out every Thursday, uh, interviews with successful authors, rockingselfpublishing.com, or just look that up in iTunes. All right, great. Thanks, Simon. You're welcome. Thank you for, thanks for having me on. All right, bye for now. Right, bye.